on January the 25th in 2006, housing authorities gained access to a London flat because of unpaid rent and they weren't receiving any response from the tenant. So they forced their way in. Once they got inside, they were not prepared for what they would find. Inside were the remains of the tenant and how she was found changes depending on the source. Some say she was found fused into the carpet in her living room and others say that she was found on the couch in her living room, which was also her bedroom. Her name was Joyce Carol Vincent, and she was 38 years old. She had passed away sometime in November of 2003, almost three years earlier. The Metropolitan Housing Trust was covering part of her rent, but because they weren't receiving her share, they came to collect. In her flat, there were piles of unopened mail by the door, there was a sink full of dishes, and a pile of wrapped Christmas presents. Her television was on the BBC channel, and there was food in her still working refrigerator with an expiration date of 2003. And Joyce had some of her utilities and some of her bills set on auto pay. Even though her name was on the mail, they still had to verify who she was and because her body was so badly decomposed, it could only be identified by comparing dental records with an old photo of her smiling. You may be wondering, why didn't anybody smell anything? Well, some people did. Her window was locked and it was slightly open, so some of the smell was able to escape that way. One neighbor said he did notice a rotten smell, but he just thought it was from the trash bins that were underneath her apartment or the stairwell. Homeless people would eat, sleep, and even use the bathroom on the stairs. The building was noisy, so that may explain why no one heard her television that was constantly on. And her flat was also above a busy shopping center that was called Wood Green Shopping City. There was a criminal investigation, but there weren't any signs of foul play found in the flat. And her door was double locked, and the chain lock on the door was still intact. In November of 2003, Joyce was hospitalized for two days because she was vomiting blood and she was having really bad stomach pains that was caused by a peptic ulcer and she also had asthma. So pathologists speculated that she may have suffered a severe asthma attack because of her living conditions, but it's just all speculation. In the hospital, she listed her bank manager as her next of kin. Joyce had several different jobs, and she was generally well-liked. She was described as well-spoken, well-dressed, she was polite, and was an attractive woman with a beautiful smile. Friends say that she would quit a job if she even had a minor confrontation with a co-worker and that she moved from one place to another all over London. After she left her job at Ernst & Young, she became a volunteer in a domestic abuse shelter, and she got another job as a cleaner in a budget hotel. Joyce Carol Vincent was born on October the 19th, 1965 in London. As far as her family, she was the youngest of four sisters and she had one brother. Her father Lawrence was of African descent and her mother Lyris was of Indian descent. Her mother died in 1976 after surgery when Joyce was only 11 and her father was a carpenter and he died in 2004. Joyce's father left her upbringing to her sister, and he was emotionally distant, so this led to a strange relationship between the two of them. And by the time she was 16, she dropped out of high school and chose to work instead. And it seemed that she wanted to get out of the life that she was living. And once she was able to, once she could afford it, she left. And as she grew up, she became more and more distant from her siblings. Her family didn't even know where she was living, and they were desperately trying to reach her. They even hired a private detective to track her down. He found her address, but she didn't respond to any of the letters that her family would send her. And it would be years before anyone even knew what happened to her. Joyce had even met Nelson Mandela, Betty Wright, and she even had dinner with Stevie Wonder. There's a documentary, Dreams of a Life, and it's about Joyce. And a lot of the information that we know now about Joyce came from this documentary. There just wasn't much information about her beforehand, and there wasn't even any photographs of her in the media. The director, Carol Morley, placed ads in newspapers, and she was asking for anyone that knew Joyce to contact her. She even placed ads on the side of a black cat. 
She wanted to know how someone's body could lay undiscovered for that long. In the documentary, Joyce's ex-boyfriend, Martin Lister, dated Joyce for three years and they kept in touch on and off until about 2002 and he didn't know that she had died until he saw the ad. Joyce was moved to this particular flat that was owned by the Metropolitan Housing Trust and it was where victims of abuse could live and their rent would be reduced. Around this time, Joyce cut ties with her family and she stopped answering their phone calls and she didn't see them at all. It's not exactly clear why that's the case, but it's been speculated that she was ashamed of the abuse that she had been subjected to, or she didn't want to take any chances and be tracked by her ex-boyfriend. Natalie Jean Wood was dubbed the woman Sydney forgot. She was last seen on December the 30th when she filled a prescription for her blood pressure meds at a local pharmacy. Her remains were found by police in Sydney, Australia on July 2011. Her body lay there undiscovered for almost eight years. Sometime around 2003, she told her brother and his wife that she had a brain tumor and it's believed she died sometime around January 2004, but her cause of death was undetermined because she had been dead for so long. She had decomposed so badly that her bones fit neatly inside a drawer and two jars that were marked hands, and feet. There was so little of her left that the first officer who looked in the bedroom didn't even see her, and a tree had even spread into a room upstairs. A forensic pathologist said neighbors may not have smelled anything because she was laying underneath a broken window that faced the street, but from the inside it would have smelled like rotten meat or a really ripe blue cheese. A neighbor said Miss Wood was nice, she kept to herself, and that she had become a recluse later in life. She wouldn't answer the door unless you used a special code when knocking. And in 2007, a neighbor said that he noticed a woman looking down at him from the window before pulling back the curtain. But no one lived there, so who did he see? A man in France was found dead in 2012, 15 years after he had passed away. In Croatia, a woman's body was found 42 years after she died. She had been reported missing, but no one ever checked her home. When the police finally went to investigate, they found her remains. And she too was pretty reclusive and she didn't communicate with family or friends or anyone else for that matter. And like Joyce, she was found in front of her TV and she was only 42. At 506 Acorn Street in Chattanooga, Tennessee, 63-year-old twins, Anthony and Andrew Johnson, were found decomposing in their recliners, and they were found during a welfare check. They had been dead for three years. Andrew monitored Anthony's glucose levels and his insulin because he was disabled and he had severe vision problems. So when Andrew died of heart disease, Anthony couldn't access his insulin. So he died too. 